check out this splash effect in PowerPoint. It is truly mind-blowing. Here's what you'll need to get this effect. First, you'll need a paint splash graphic, and I'll go over where you can get that and how you can make it work for this effect. And then, of course, you'll need your image that you want to use for this project. And then finally, you want to have a gradient so that you can make it a little bit colorful and give it more of that painted look. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you may know that my favorite place to get images right now is freepick.com. So let's go there right now and see how to do this. So here we are in freepick.com and we just put in the words paint splash or you can do ink splash or paint splatter or something like that. They should all give you similar results. And here you have a series of just beautiful graphics that you can use for free with attribution or pay just about $9 a month so that you don't have to cite anything. So the one that I used for this effect is this one here. And then I just go to free download and then free download. And then it starts the process to download automatically. And then you just hit open and then drag the EPS file into the document. Here's where it gets interesting. Now we ungroup this by hitting Control Shift G and then hitting yes and then doing it again, Control Shift G. And now we can use this paint splash as we like. And we just need to remove all of this other stuff around it, the gradient, this piece on the bottom, and then this stuff down here. Great, now, we, now we're ready to go. And this is considered a shape in PowerPoint, so we can now fill this and change the color as we like. And that's what's great about vector images. You can do that with any picture from freepick.com. Now let's group this so that we have one nice clean shape to work with. And then hit Control G to group. Great, now we have our basic paint splash here. And our challenge now becomes, how do we get that woman's face into the splash background here? And there are two ways to do it. One is what I call an easy way, and one is a little bit of a harder way, but it's much cleaner as well. So let's try the easy way first, and I'll show you the other way. For the easy way, the first thing we do is we insert a rectangle onto the slide. So we go to insert, shapes, and then rectangle. And then make that white fill with a white shape outline as well. Now let's send this to the back. And now click on the paint splash. And now let's make this a color that's just a shade darker than the white. So let's go here and then choose this gray up here, just below the white. And it takes a little while to work because you're actually filling in all of these tiny shapes here that are all part of this. Do the same with the shape outline. And now you have this kind of a gray splash effect here. Now select that along with the rectangle that we just made. And then cut these shapes by going to Control X and now paste by right clicking and then choosing this option here, pasting as picture. Then go to format, color, and then set transparent color and then click in the middle here. Even though it looks like it disappeared, we now have kind of a mask layer with a hole that's cut out in the shape of the paint splash. So you can kind of see that on the side here. So now we can use this right away and the way we can check is that we can paste this picture of the woman on here. Let's send that to the back. And then we can play around with this splash mask. We can kind of resize it, we can flip it around, uh, whatever we wanna do. 
And then of course you can crop the, the shape around it as well so that it's not sticking out too much. And there you go, there's your basic, basic splash effect. Now one slight issue with this technique is that sometimes, depending on the color that you used for the fill, it leaves these little dots here. You can reduce or avoid these dots by using a darker fill color, but then when you go to remove the color, the problem is that you get some, these kind of edges around it sometimes. So that's why I call this the easy, but not necessarily the cleanest solution. So let me show you the slightly harder way, but one that will get rid of all of these issues. For this technique, we need to, to set the background of the slide to be filled with the picture that you're trying to use. So in order to do that and have it be in the position that it is here, we first have to insert a rectangle that is the exact size of the slide. And we can make that again a white rectangle and re remove the outline. Send this to the back. And now again, cut that along with the picture. So select both, control X to cut. And now right click the slide, say format background, and then say picture or texture fill, and then insert picture from clipboard. Now this looks the same, but this is actually now the slide background, so I can't move it at all. Next, what I do is I bring my paint splash in here and now I rotate it in the position I want. So let me do that here. Next, I put a white rectangle or actually whatever kind of rectangle I want over this. And what this is gonna do is it's going to separate the paint splash from the background. So it's gonna add an extra layer in between. So make this white again and then take out the outline. Now send this to the back. And because the, the woman's face is on the slide background, you can't see it. And here is the trick here. Select this. And now we ungroup this. So Control Shift G to ungroup. And then Control Shift G again. So now we have everything ungrouped. And now what we do is we go to slide background fill. And now each of these pieces is filled in with the woman's face, wherever it is on the background. Once we have the fill done, hit Control G again to group everything. And now you can shift this around as you like. So let me move it down a little bit. Now the other cool thing that you can do is you can actually duplicate this shape here and it will still give you that background fill. So if you say Control D, you'll get another version of this and you can manipulate it and layer it on top of it as well. So those are the basic two ways of doing this. And I recommend doing the harder way if at all possible since it does give a cleaner, more customizable result. Let me show you quickly now how to add a gradient to this as a finishing touch. Then I'll go over how to get that mind explosion effect right afterwards. The easiest way to make the gradient is actually do it right in PowerPoint. And here's what I did for this shape. So let's see what it looks like here. We go to Format and Shape Styles. And here you can see all of the different gradient points. And of course you can make this whatever angle you like or whatever colors that you want in here. So just to go through these gradient stops here, we have kind of an orange color here at 60% transparency. Next at the 25% position at 60% transparency, we have a red color. Next at the 75% position and at 50% transparency we have a purple and then in the final 100% position we have kind of an aqua bluish color with a 50% transparency and again you can vary these stops as you like um, just make it whatever you think looks best in your situation
I do recommend making these all at least 50% transparent because once you put the gradient on top of the picture, you want to be able to see the picture behind it. So once we put it on top, kind of like this, we then have to select both of these and then hit Control X to cut and then right click and then paste as a picture. From here, we now have to change the contrast and brightness settings to give it that a final effect. So go to picture here the, on the format menu. You can also get that from format and then corrections and then going to here, picture correction options, doesn't matter. So then you hit picture corrections here and then you can play with this how you like, but personally for me, it worked to do 20% brightness and then 40% contrast to get that kind of a blended look but still make the features stand out. Because if you don't adjust the brightness and contrast settings, it'll look really washed out and dark kind of like this. So it's important to do some level of adjustment afterwards. And then of course, once you do this, you follow the same procedure, either create the mask with the easy way on top or put this as a slide background uh, like we did with the hard way. And for the final transition, it's especially cool to kind of transition from the regular picture to the one with the splash and gradient to give it that surprising kind of a look in your presentation. So that's it for this. Let's now move to the mind explosion effect. So the way to do this is actually very similar to what I showed you before. To start off, you want to have a picture with ideally a white background. So this is what I had here. And then for the pieces that are going to explode out, you want to have some rectangles here or some shapes that are approximately the same color as the piece that's about to explode. Okay, so once I did that, I basically copied this whole thing and then I pasted as the slide background, just like I did previously. And the splash that I used for this was a little bit of a different one. And this is one I also found on freepick.com. It's this weird clover exploding, kind of like that. So let me just walk you through step-by-step step how I did this. So first you wanna take your picture and then set it as a slide background, like what I mentioned before. And you can see that this is the slide background here, I can't move it. Next, we add the splash layer. So I added this clover here just like this and I've added a, an outline just so that you can see where it is so it's not transparent. Next, I added what I call a splash cover. So it's the same as that rectangle that we added previously. But this time I only want to cover a part of this. So I did this kind of at the top of my head here and then also on the side here. After this, I added actually a cropped duplicate photo. So this is in the exact same position where it was before I put it as the slide background and I have it, and I have it outlined here so that you can see. And you want this line to happen approximately where you want your splashes to kind of start going. And then I, I put this to the back so it looks like this. And then if you take out all of the outlines here, this is what it looks like so far. So already that's pretty good, but what I need to do now is add little white flecks here because these are essentially the holes that are happening as these other pieces are exploding. So the way that I got the flecks is I actually went back to this clover here and then I removed kind of the larger part of this clover. So I went delete and now I have all of these black flecks to, to work with. And what I did is made them white, so added a white fill, and they didn't have an outline. So then I uh, control C to copy, and then control V to paste, and now I just resize these, and you can see how they're starting to appear on my face. So that looks just a little bit more realistic than what we had before. And now you can duplicate this, control D, as many times as you like to create additional flex. 
So lots and lots of possibilities with this technique. Uh, I especially like it for when there's some kind of emotion, when somebody's really mad or when somebody's jumping or running. This is a really nice effect. For example, I did a very simple one uh, with a car but it still shows a little bit of mo motion. So that's it for this kind of head explosion effect. And now you have several examples to hopefully spark your own creativity around how to use this effect in your presentations. Again, make sure to get the free download to jumpstart your projects. And of course, check out my spicy slide pack if you wanna get the full intro slides and other slides to my videos. So thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and see you for my next one.